When it comes to becoming a developer, one of the questions I get asked the most is, why does it take so long to learn how to code? I've discovered the answer to this can be found in research related to learning curves. So what is a learning curve? The concept of learning curves has been around since 1885. Typically, the research has been performed in the psychological and cognitive sciences. However, the concept can be clearly utilized when it comes to learning development. In this image is a standard learning curve. This was generated by a big data analysis algorithm that analyzed the learning patterns of individuals in a number of industries. The curve is smooth because it takes the average learning processes and it averages each one of the data points. Later in this guide, we'll take a look at what a learning curve looks like for a single person and it's similar, but there are some very important differences. Over the years, I've had the privilege of teaching students how to become developers. I've witnessed this learning curve play itself out over and over again. And in this guide, I want to examine the three stages that all developers go through. Additionally, I'll discuss about how long it takes to traverse from one stage to another. The three stages that I'm going to discuss are liftoff, the twilight zone, and the zone. Let's start off by taking a look at the liftoff stage. This is an exciting time for new students. During this time, students are immersed in learning skills that they've never learned before. Because of all the topics the students learn during this stage are brand new, their expertise skyrockets. I like to call this the liftoff stage because it's easy to visualize a new student's expertise like a rocket ship soaring into the sky into places it has never been before. During this time, a student will learn how to configure a development machine, learn a new programming language, work with various frameworks, build functional applications, and the list goes on and on. This stage usually lasts for the first 250 to 300 hours that a developer is learning how to code. This estimate is based on what I've seen with the DevCamp Bootcamp students and equals to about six to eight weeks of intensive learning. As fun as this stage is, it has drawbacks. One of the key problems is that it can give students a false confidence. When they see themselves building applications that actually work, it's natural to believe that they can dive right into building production apps for clients. However, the issue is that they don't realize that they're about to enter the twilight zone of learning how to code. After the exciting liftoff stage of the developer learning curve, aspiring developers will enter the twilight zone. This is a challenging time for students and many students decide to quit programming entirely during this stage, unfortunately. So why is this time so challenging? After seeing countless students go through it, I've discovered that there are a number of contributing factors. While in this stage, many of the core concepts and commands haven't yet cemented themselves in a student's long-term memory. This results in them having to constantly look up documentation, query stack overflow, and things like that. During this time, the novelty of simply having an application that works has worn off and now students are asked to perform advanced tasks, such as working with legacy applications, debugging defects, improving performance, and building features that they don't have a step-by-step -step tutorial for. Additionally, while working through the twilight zone, students are expected to start implementing best practices. In the launch stage, your primary goal was to get applications functional. During this next phase, students start learning how to build applications that can be used in real-world scenarios. This means that a student may spend five times longer to build out an application with the identical feature of something that they created during the launch stage. This can be frustrating. However, the increased time spent implementing best practices allow the applications to be scalable and flexible enough to be used in production. This is in stark contrast to the apps created during the launch phase that don't really adhere to industry standards. And there's absolutely nothing the matter with having that process. You want to be able to go through that phase and focus simply on getting things working, seeing what the components and capabilities of the language are, and 
after you have that good foundation, then you can move on to the important things that you need to have in order to build production applications that other people are going to use. There is good news though. If a student persists through the twilight zone of learning, they'll enter the zone of the developer learning curve. This zone is entered usually after about a thousand hours of study and work. During this stage, developers have a wide range of features they can build without even having to look up the documentation for. In this stage, when you visit Stack Overflow, you'll actually be answering as many questions as you ask. And thankfully, learning new concepts will come easier. The reason why this is, is because at this stage, you will have developed mental models for development. For example, I recently started working with the Scala programming language. I've been able to pick up on how to build applications in Scala dramatically faster than when I started learning C or PHP a decade ago. This is because I have a decade of knowledge in the development space that allows me to frame the new concepts. When I read the documentation and see what it says about data types, I don't have to wonder what a data type is. Instead, I can skip ahead and learn about the syntax. As you'll notice in the developer learning curve, the growth pattern in this phase is less than the other two stages. As you've heard me say countless times before, learning never ends for developers. However, learning does change. During this phase, a developer focuses on learning topics such as incremental performance improvements, building helper code libraries, refining how application code flows, and overall best practices. At the beginning of this guide, you may have noticed that the developer learning curve was smooth. However, that's not reality. The reason why the curve was smooth was because it averaged out the learning path of a large number of individuals. When it comes to a single student, the learning curve looks more like this image. There are ups and downs throughout the learning life cycle. As a student, you may decide to switch programming languages after a few years, like I did when I switched from PHP into Ruby. Even though you don't have to start from scratch, it still takes time to learn a new language or framework. So don't get discouraged if you aren't satisfied with their skill level, because I have a secret to tell you. Good developers never feel like they've arrived and are never done learning.